Yeah guys, I really don't know who won this one. Sure KI was a bit more repetitive, but also felt Helium was a bit all over the place in terms of structure, but both really gave a lot in their rounds. That sums it up pretty well. Thank you. Just kidding, but yeah. <laughs> pretty much describes uh, the problems of both of them. Wow. Also, mix of this. Amazing audio mix. It sounds so good. So clean, so powerful. And at the same time, not forced, you know? Big shout out to Mad Speed. This was amazing. Let's pose the king. Yo, what's up, my current feature beatbox? Welcome back to another analysis video, which is by Maddox, aka. Men of culture. Today, I'm going to check out King Inertia versus Helium at the BBU in the top 16. It's already a little while ago since this battle happened, but some of you guys requested it, and there was a huge discussion under my last video about this battle, so I was like, Let's analyze that. I'm gonna start with King Inertia's video, but first I'm gonna check out the comments. Let's read some comments. <laughs> yeah, guys, I really don't know who won this one. Sure, KI was a bit more repetitive, but also felt Helium was a bit all over the place in terms of structure, but both really gave a lot in their rounds. That sums it up pretty well. Thank you. <laughs> Just kidding, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much describes uh, the problems of both of them. Let's discuss this later. The last one minute was so amazing, man. I got to hear Inertia doing technical beats for the first time thanks to Sin and Shazam. Wait, he did technical beats? What? I forgot about this one. Wait, how long is it ago? It's like two months already. Yeah. <laughs> I actually focused more on another competitor. Maybe you know Dan. Whatever, let's go back to the comments. I would give it to Inertia. Helium was good, but when you look at the judging system, I think Inertia might just accumulate more points. Yeah, that sounds like beatbox is more adjusting to the judging system instead of doing great at what I do usually. But also this could be really opinion based, this comment. And therefore I enjoy actually judging systems where your opinion as a judge don't matter too much, it's more about the experience that you have as a judge. If that makes sense for you. For example, if I always would apply my taste, I would always go for better structure, better musicality, like amazing melodies and stuff. I also personally enjoy more simple, but more focused on sound design. But then when I'm judging and have a proper judging system, of course, I also will look on stuff that I personally don't prefer so much like technicality and stuff like that. I'm not sure it sounded that clean in GBB. Now it looks more complex and full of details. Now this is precision. Is this a shout out to Collapse? Precision. Yeah, but for sure at BBU, you can unfold your full potential as a beatboxer because you don't need to do everything in one take. You don't have to pressure standing on stage. You can do it in your studio, multiple takes and really take it to the next level. Of course, you also need to be experienced in sound engineering. But for example, here we had Matt Speed who worked on Inertia's round. So I'm excited to re-listen to it. So let's get into the video. Let me analyze that. It's too late. I can control your fate. Fuck it out of my face. I'ma show you who's a disgrace. Remember the time? <laughs> 
supposed to remember. That nigga don't talk. More impressive about the mix <laughs> than the actual beatbox. The beatbox is sick, dog. So my first impression, amazing bass, amazing audio mix. It sounds so good, so clean, so powerful. And at the same time, not forced, you know, like it's, it still sounds like beatboxing. It's like, wow, just big shout out to Matt Speed. This was amazing. I'm not so impressed by the technical parts, to be honest, like it's good. It's on a good level, but like if I compare it to like, for example, Dropical, he was really impressive with some technical parts. He had like some really jaw dropping technical parts. Inertia was good. Also, for me, this video was too long, to be honest. It felt like he could do a three minutes video and we wouldn't miss out on any anything. Yeah, like some parts were a little bit too long. Uh, could shorten that down. Um, so yeah, composition wise, ah, I don't know. But yeah, his bass as always is sick. I really like the, the melody. <coughs> really, really dope. It's this this one. Ah, Reckless, Reckless, it's, it's Reckless, right? Reckless. <coughs> I immediately remembered it. I think the, the video is already really really old, right? But still works, still pretty well. Like the bass is really is still top notch. Yeah, so pretty dope. All right, so before I keep talking, let's rewatch some parts and let's get into the details. <laughs> Yeah, the 
the melody is so dope. Dun, 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 dun. Really, really dope drill beat. That's that's really dope. I really love that one. It's like simple and clean as music should be. Not always, but yeah, simple and clean. Really dope beat. <laughs> Also, it's in what base? Oh man, I still, still try to get it. <laughs> Didn't warm it up today. <laughs> but I think if, if, even if I was warming up, <laughs> wouldn't be close. <clears throat> wow. let, me, let me drink some water. Today is especially bad. <laughs> Maybe you remember my inward based tutorial. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? That was a bit better. Anyways, his bass is insane. Probably the cleanest inward bass in the scene. Not the most versatile when you compare it to Dan or Vokoda, but definitely like on stage, it sounded the best. Like so bassy, so so much sobs inside. It's crazy. And here it sounds amazing too. <laughs> the mix on this one, the kick, can you hear like how much it's sticking out? Like uh, Inertia, he doesn't use an airy kick. He doesn't use air when he does it. It's more like it doesn't do because it's simply impossible to combine it at the same time with um, inward bass. So it's more like, yeah, it's not like, yeah, if you, if you would do like a normal kick, even when you do it inward, maybe it could work. The inward bass wouldn't be that consistent. Yeah, but here in the mix, it slaps so much. Damn, yeah, really, really nice attack on the kick. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm more impressed about the about the audio mix than about the actual beatboxing. <laughs> then after he switched the melody to the he kept playing around with the melody and adding some details to it. But yeah, personally for me, the stuff he was adding weren't that impressive to justify the length of the video. <laughs> He's just flowing around and stuff, yeah that's cool, but you know it feels more like a a beat where you would add like lyrics to it like imagine a rapper would rap over this then it would make sense then it would have a purpose to be so long but yeah feels a bit too long here uh, not enough variations maybe he could add some vocals in between to break it down a bit um, to give it more dynamics maybe switch the melody whatever it is or just shorten it down <laughs> just shorten it down because overall it's a sick routine it's just too long Five minutes. This could be a two thirty or three minutes max, I would say. Yeah, but then here, that one part sticking out so much, I wouldn't even get to this point because the intro was so long. Oh. The first part is like okay, okay, it was coming, but then. Oh, sick transition. Is it, is it like the collapse click, the collapse click, what, what, click, collapse click, whatever you want to call it. This kind of snare. There's like this, like on the mix, it's like if you use headphones or I use monitors, so I have like a, a nice stereo field, you can hear like, it's like spread it over the mix. So it's like, I, th I feel like the, the first, 
first click is like on the left, the uh, second on the right, and it feels so wide. Such a cool effect on the mix. <laughs> Yeah, so then after like two minutes 50, he switched into like a kind of like a bridge or something where he's playing with the zippers. And for some reason he's speeding up here and for me it doesn't really make sense. And also the way he was transitioning into the faster part wasn't that smooth, you know what I mean? So I don't know, like this part, either he could stay in the tempo or give a purpose to it or switch like into the speed up a bit smoother or something. You know, like like build in like a speed up or something. But this one was not really purposefully made. So when he when he got into this part, it kind of was throwing me off. I first felt like he's he's getting off time now. Then I got used to it, but still, yeah, could be smoother the transition. <laughs> Let's say, is, is this like the, the pig bass technique? <laughs> I'm not sure if I like it. Sometimes, it, sometimes it has a feel. Well, sometimes he, he, he can speed it up. Yeah, it's it's cool though. It's original. Like I I never heard someone using it like this. You know the Kenos the typical Kenos music. So. Can't really do it. Um, but there he uses uses the pick bass more as a bass. Here it's like on top of his throat bass. Um, so and it works. You know, like it's switching up hi hats, replacing hi hats with. And then playing around with it, that's cool. <laughs> and then at the end, of course, we have this technical part. And as I said already, um, it's not like the most impressive technical part, but it's cool that he does it, especially like against someone like Helium, who's like more like focused on percussions to show like, yo, I can do that nice. too. <laughs> yeah. But as I said, I think someone like Helium or Alem or yeah, in, at BBU, Dropical, uh, would pull it off a bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was Inertia's video. Let's switch to Helium's video and check the comments first. Let's read some comments. <laughs> There's a high chance that Helium walks away with the crown, considering the fact that he was able to showcase the variety he possesses. Big thanks to Sin and Shazam for conducting this battle in this format. Yeah, as we all know, it turned out differently. <laughs> but yes, also for me it was impressive how many different styles Helium can do. Helium never disappoints. This round felt insanely consistent. He felt like an Elysi. Insanely good, don't get me wrong, but never any high points or huge build-ups. With that being said, there were never low points either. My interpretation of this comment is that yes, Helium is actually really good already in basics. Like he can do a really basic beat and because of his basics are so clean, his hi-hats, kicks, especially his inward snare, they're so, so clean. He can do a simple beat and it's impressive already. But at the same time, he doesn't have like super outstanding sounds like for example, Inertia. Inertia has like this inward bass and it's always impressive. For Helium, it's a bit harder to impress people. He has to go like into some technicalities, feel the moment, you know what I mean. But for Inertia, it's just like, here's the inward bass and boom, here's the attention of people. And this is where the battle go even more insane. God, I've been anticipating this rematch so bad. Edit, and it was worth the wait. <laughs> okay, let's watch it. Let me analyze that. Oh. 
Helium, my first impression, clean as f Echt? This beatboxer is so clean, like all his basics are so, so clean. The first drop, the first German bass drop, it's like so simple, like the sounds he's using is so simple, but just because his sounds are so clean, it makes it so special, you know? Like if I would do this beat, if I would copy it, it wouldn't turn out as special because there's no special sounds inside. But for him, like when Helium is beatboxing, every basic sound, especially his inward snare, sounds like a special sound. Then of course, what I also liked is that he was using actual inward bass and it sounded pretty pretty impressive for me at least i have to say though like inertia like when he does inward bass he can also combine it like with some technical beats like he's layering some percussions on top of it helium didn't do that at the end 
he just stick to a really simple dancehall beat. So that's why for me, it wasn't on the same level. A big downside for me also is that the composition is kind of off. I also felt like similar with Inertia that this is a bit too long. He was stretching some parts a, a little bit too long. It could be way more dynamic. And also there was no main theme that was like going through the whole routine. It was more of a collection of crazy drops. All right, so before I keep talking, let's rewatch some parts and get into the details. Yeah. Hillem started with the melody, so actually started pretty well composition wise. For me, the melody itself, like it wasn't like really attention grabbing. Either should have a like a more darker vibe. He just would need to sell it differently, you know, like in the video, like you just see him like yeah. the melody sounds like he wants to get in a more of a darker vibe. But the video doesn't really sell it right, like also the, the way he's executing it in the video. So it didn't really do something to me. I'm not sure if I am the problem here. So let me know in the comments what you think about this. <laughs> Then afterwards he was playing around with a melody and a special trumpet. I personally really like it. It has a certain texture to it. <laughs> Absolutely no clue how it does it. But yeah, this is pure helium sound. <laughs> And then afterwards he gets into a transition that is not a usual count. We're gonna talk about it later because as you know, Sin and Shazam criticized this part uh, because they felt like it's bad timing. And as you might also remember, <laughs> River did this reel on Instagram where he was criticizing Sin and Shazam for falsely accusing Helium to have timing mistakes. <laughs> But as you might already know, if you count it right, it's in time. Let's depose the king. Yeah, it's just really hard to count. But yeah, this is like advanced techniques, I would say. <laughs> Go drum and bass. After the build up, the first drop, it sounded pretty well, but for me, like there was no real energy change in between the verse and the drop. If you know what I mean, like for me, the drop should be on a higher energy level than the verse part. And if you re-listen to the verse part. <laughs> and then go back to the drop. <laughs> the difference in energy is not that big. You could replace it and probably it wouldn't really change the composition a lot. Like this, this has a little bit more bass, but same drive kind of. So yeah, this is, there's, there's like no real evolution curve. It's a pretty flat evolution curve. Maybe that's also what the comment before meant that there's like, like Helium is never disappointing, but he also never has like big highlights. Like his basic level is pretty high, but also there's not like big surprises, except maybe the end part with the inward bass. <laughs> Go drum and bass. Also, the transition parts with the vocals for me kind of felt a bit forced. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. It's just like 
it, it didn't feel like it's in the flow of the track, if you know what I mean. Maybe Helium was like collecting a bunch of drum and bass beats like that, that are dope and all of them are crazy and clean. And then he tried to merge them together and thought about like some transition parts. Yeah, but it, for, me, for me, it's like not flowing really well into each other. Then afterwards he keeps doing like some drum and bass parts. And to be honest, for me it's a, yeah, because it's like so long and like it doesn't have a real storyline to follow. It's for me so hard to like pay my full attention through the whole video. Every single part itself is such a dope thing, you know, like, but this could be like three different routines, if you know what I mean. But not three different routines that are merged into one song, but like three separate beats. <laughs> <laughs> like for me, when he said, let's suppose the king, after two minutes, he could easily switch into the part with the live bar. You know what I mean. This, li this little bar here. Yeah. You know, make it short and sweet instead of like forcefully tr trying to stretch. I know also like this was like the first battle, like the top 16. So for lots of competitors, it was kind of overwhelming that there is no time limit. So lots of competitors, I think like felt forced to do something long in order to not get minus points for like being too short. But luckily, as you saw in the semifinals now, it didn't really make big difference if you make it longer or shorter. What is more important to have a sick composition. <laughs> Yeah, then at the end he had this crazy inward bass. I'm not even sure what is this. <laughs> Sounds like inward alien bass or whatever it is. Inward alien bass. You know, like helium and alien. Anyways, that was pretty sick. And then afterwards he switched into like a regular, more regular inward bass. <laughs> The only problem is because I don't know if he actually was recording with the Zoom recorder, but uh, my experience is that recordings with the Zoom are not the best. You miss a lot of low end. You're gonna miss attacks on like drums. So yeah, in general, I wouldn't really recommend to use the Zoom recorder for like recording tracks. It's an amazing tool to take with you to record some demos, some ideas. But um, if it comes to like actually recording your tracks, I would switch to something like the SM7B or other. If you wanna go a bit more expensive, this one is the Neumann TLM 102. And that's the microphone I use normally to record. And yeah, it's just different quality. Diff it's like studio quality, yeah. And yeah, throughout the whole video, I also felt like his audio was really inconsistent. Like I could tell he was recording some parts in different rooms. It's just different takes smashed together. And there's some huge quality differences in between sometimes. And this was hard to ignore, to be honest. And when you compare it to Inertia, who had like amazing audio, then of course, um, yeah. It's not really comparable. All right, so I just wrote down the, the points of Synchazam. So professionally done, right? So, oh my gosh. <laughs> Saved so much space. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Inertia got two minus points because he was too late. That's a weird thing to start off. <laughs> and then it's even more impressive that he actually won still. Yeah, don't know if that is, that's necessary. I, I think I would either disqualify someone or not. Or just let him battle, but not give him a, like a handicap to punish him. I don't know what hap what exactly happened, like how hard it was to get his material, but... Ah! <laughs> Maybe then it, it also wouldn't look that close at the end, if you know what I mean, because lots of people actually told Helium got robbed, you know? Originality, um, both got one point. You know my opinion about originality already. Uh, pitch and timing, no one got a point. Um, on inertia, I can tell because of this abrupt uh, timing switch, he got faster uh, immediately. On helium, yeah, like I said, like they even show the parts in the video. Sin and Shazam said there were other parts um, where it was more obvious. But to be honest, 
I didn't see that. It was counted right. It was just a special way of counting. But if you put a metronome on top of it, um, you can tell that it's still in time. So this is one thing where I need to disagree, where I actually would give Helium one point. Then complexity both get a point. Helium might be a bit cleaner on drums, but inertia is like better with bass lines and layering. Totally agree with this. Enjoyment of listening, uh, both get a point. They had both to criticize, so maybe I wouldn't give them, like either of those I would give a point because again, wh when I'm talking about enjoyment of listening, I talk about composition and for me both are not really well composed, but at the end it would make a difference if it's both a point or both, not a point. Then video point goes to inertia. Um, yeah, the intro was pretty dope with the chess kings and yeah, the overall like the attitude of inertia in the video, you know, it was more authentic. Like I said at the beginning, Helium, uh, the melody that was a bit darker, I didn't really buy it just from the video. The way inertia was performing into the camera and stuff like that, it looked a bit more authentic. Audio, most definitely, uh, if the point system wouldn't be binary, <laughs> Uh, but if there would be like more than one point, I would even give Inertia more points because, man, this was like one of the best audios, I would say, um, in the BBU. Because, yeah, the mix is just so clean. Bass is super clean, the kicks are hitting hard, but nothing is like really forced, nothing is distorted. It's just a really good job. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm talking so good today about Mad Speed. Mad Speed, you did a good job. Follow him on Instagram to support this guy. Good sound engineer. Then the battle point goes to Inertia. Absolutely reasonable. Helium did an inward bass beat at the end. But yeah, it wasn't like as mind blowing as some people might would have expected. As I said, that was like not like layering like Inertia would do or not enough variations in the inward bass. Yeah, it was just not hitting so hard for some reason. Like the sound itself was sick, especially the high pitched one. Yeah, but Shazam said in his video and I agree, like it wasn't like so mind blowing that you would be like, oh, okay, he just to, uh, deposed the king actually, you know. Uh, but on the other hand, we had Inertia hit some some nice punchlines like in the video with the, with the white king that was fallen and the black king standing and then we had yeah he said this that people don't talk <laughs> he said the n-word there but uh, yeah you know what i mean that was pretty funny referring to that he actually won against helium already so why helium does even bother to battle him again that was a nice front um, and yeah, a bit more authentic, I would say, like the battle moves were, were a bit more authentic. User vote actually got went to Helium. I think maybe because people are like, oh, right. yeah, maybe they were hyping the inward base. Yeah, but you all only can guess why people would give the user vote to somebody. Maybe because of the technicality, maybe because of... We never know. We never will know. Then extra point of, of sin, there's no extra point of sin. But there's an extra point of Shazam to Inertia. And he's again referring to the battle moves, the overall vibe of it. Arguable, again, I'm not the, also not the biggest fan of these extra points because um, I feel like every time Sim Shazam are arguing about the extra points, they're actually referring to categories that are already existing. You know, they were like, ah, oh, he, did, he did better battle moves, he had better composition, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it's basically just summing up all the categories they already have and then adding up something. Maybe this this could be an idea to rethink uh, this point um, parts. But at the end of the day, I don't think that Helium actually got robbed. Yes, the timing point should go to him, but then it would be a draw. Considering that Inertia already started with minus two points, it's kind of weird <laughs> to, do, to do this in a battle. I never saw this happening in a battle that someone had to start with a handicap because he was too late or because of something, you know. Either disqualify someone for cheating or for not, not accepting the rules or let him pass. For example, we, in the in GBB, we had this once that Riddermind was kind of cheating in the finals, the year where he won, because he used the metronome as a beat. <laughs> As you know, on the loop station, you can switch on a metronome and you can just play it on your headphones and you also, but you also can make it hearable for the audience. So you program it on the output and 
in the metronome there's actually a house beat that sounds pretty full and he used it um, to actually perform his routine and there was a big discussion to disqualify him or not at the end we didn't disqualify him because the rules weren't directly saying that you can't use the metronome it just said that you can't pre-save samples on the loop station but this was all already on the loop station when he bought it so Technically, he didn't pre-save it, whatever it is. But yeah, at the end, we the discussion was disqualify him or not, but not giving him a handicap. I think I would handle this differently um, in future. At the end, Inertia still won. So let's say he wouldn't have the handicap. Helium would get one point for pitch and timing and there wouldn't be extra points. Then it would be a draw. Wait, then would we draw? No. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Six. No, it would be six to six to five. So yeah, Inasha would still win. So <laughs> turns out, yeah, timing issue. Okay, but then the handicap. What the fuck? <laughs> I think at the end, uh, Helium didn't get dropped. Inasha still deserved to win this one. Again, please keep in mind this is all opinion based. Uh, there might be people who strongly disagree with me, who agree with me. So let's keep the discussion going. Get yourself multiple sources to build your own opinion. Collapse, for example, started to do reaction videos. Alam is doing reaction videos. Of course, Synergism do it. So yeah, try to get multiple opinions to build your own opinion. All right, guys, this is it for this video. Quick and easy. If you enjoy my content, please like the video, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And if you want to see more analysis videos about the BBU, I got one right here where I was analyzing Jordox versus my favorite beatboxer, Dan. At least right now it's my favorite beatboxer. But, yeah, you know, he's amazing. Such a good overall amazing beatboxer. Check it out. Click it right now.